Hi, my name is Janice Carroll, and I'm so excited to be uh, doing this information on the California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Program. Um, before we get into all of those details, I wanted to quickly talk about Barrett Financial Group because I know many of you may not have heard of Barrett Financial Group and maybe you may not have even worked with me in the past. Um, Barrett Financial Group is a mortgage brokerage shop. It uh, was founded in 2002 and um, it is uh, headquartered in Gilbert, Arizona. And uh, again, it's a mortgage brokerage shop, which means that we work with wholesale lenders. We have relationships with over a hundred lenders and um, and uh, Cal Hafa really is just a small portion of the business that we do. Um, but if you like what you see and who, you, how we work, then please reach out to us to our other products. We do um, the regular vanilla programs, FHA, VA. Uh, we do have uh, down payment assistance, not just for first time home buyers, and that can go down to a 600 credit score even. We do ITIN loans for borrowers and we do uh, DACA borrowers. Um, so please reach out to us. Um, but but I'll stop and talk about CalHafa now, which uh, is a California <clears throat> housing finance agency. It was created in 1975. Their mission is completely to help more Californians um, purchase and own their own home and make home um, owning more affordable. And so CalHafa is not a direct lender and uh, they have, again, were created in 1975 and we've worked with CalHafa for many years. Uh, they actually offer products that uh, conventional loans, VA, um, USDA that have uh, down payment and closing costs assistance components to them. And so because they've been a source for assistance, this is we've worked with them for many years. And uh, I wanted to at least give you information about them because these are their core products, meaning that they will not go away. Like I said, they've been in existence since 1975 and they self-support. It's a self-supporting agency, mainly funded by the regurgitation of their um, participant, previous participants. So as borrowers, um, that obtained assistance, refinance or sell their property, the money goes back into the fund and allows to uh, build or continue a funding for more the next homeowner, right? Um, so that's CalHafa. Um, and again, they have many programs that are co their core programs, but programs like the Dream for All and last year's Equity Builder, these are state initiatives, which the funding is from the state, which means that the state dictates how and how much money and uh, how this money is used. So originally sought out was $800 million and 300 million, as you know, was approved. Um, but the guidelines for the core products and their initiatives are very, very similar. Um, so quickly, first time home buyers uh, only, right? And their definition is uh, a, per a borrower who is defined and who has not had ownership interest in any principal residence or resided in the home owned by a spouse during the previous three years. This brings up a lot of questions. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, if you have a borrower, that owns rental property and they can prove that they have rent that's a rental maybe they have it on their tax returns um and they can prove that they live elsewhere maybe he lives with his girlfriend who owns her home he would be considered a first-time home buyer um just the fact that he owns rental property is not going to eliminate him um, a second example might be a granddaughter that helps his, the grandmother qualify for her mortgage. Um, she, if she is on title and on that loan, that's not going to eliminate her if she has not lived in that home with the grandmother for the most recent three years, right? Um, all borrowers must occupy the property. Um, and let's see, there are no, there are no sales price limits but there are income limits and whatever your borrower's income is going to be their limit, of course, right? But our sales price limit, but the income limits, um, you've seen the chart posted around. I'm going to uh, bring that up on the next slide. Um, <clears throat> but again, no sales price limits. The minimum FICO score is going to depend on what income bucket you're in. There is a low income and there's a moderate income. Um, if you're in the low income, the minimum credit score is 660. And for the moderate income, it's 680. Um, but the loan itself, 
is a conventional loan and in all of the guidelines and everything you know about a conventional loan is going to be the same for this. So normal stuff, two years W-2s, if that's what we're using to qualify or two years tax returns, um, pay stubs for 30 days and bank statements for two months. Um, things, questions like, uh, about student loans, or maybe you have a borrower that only has an offer letter because they're going to start their job in a month. Same guidelines for conventional. As long as it works uh, on the uh, DU and it proves it, then we're going to be okay. But what uh, outside of everything conventional is that DU, or sorry, is that the credit scores um, and DTI are hard and fast. So the minimum credit score requirements are a must and the DTI is you can go to 50% of your income uh, as long as you have a 700 score. But if you're below that, we're tethered to 45%. Um, this does also require education. So um, there is a first time home buyer education required on uh, the CalHafa products. They have a preferred provider, which is eHome America. It's online, it's eight hours, and it's $99. It's good for one year. At the end of it, you are given instructions to contact your counselor, and then you'll receive a certificate. And then in addition to that, there's a supplemental education, which is a shared appreciation portion, which is amazing, which I'm so glad they provide because it's really excellent information. And as a realtor, I would recommend that if you want to have deeper conversations with your borrower about it, that you do the training as well. Um, I promise you'll uh, not I, that you'll get value out of it. Um, the product also requires a one year home warranty um, and it's eligible for single families, uh, condos and manufactured homes. Um, manufactured homes have specific uh, debt to income ratio requirements to so reach out uh, with any questions that you have. Um, eligible borrowers, U.S. citizens, permanent and non-permanent resident aliens. Um, we do allow for borrowers, DACA borrowers with an employ employment authorization document. Um, okay, so uh, down payment assistance dream for all. What is it? Um, it's a uh, 20, up to 20% of the purchase price that can be used for the down payment and closing costs. So if you uh, want to use it entirely for the down payment, there's huge advantages. Obviously, uh, you would avoid mortgage insurance, keep the payments nice and low. Um, um, but if you don't have money for closing costs, then we can structure it to cover the closing costs. And then um, whatever's left over can be used for the down payment. Um, but it can be used entirely for the down payment. And if the uh, program does allow for seller concessions, so if uh, the borrower doesn't have their own money, the seller is allowed to pay up to 6% to cover closing costs. Uh, also, this program, as you will see, the income limits are high. Um, in Santa, San Mateo, San Francisco, you can make $25,000 a month. It's not for you know, a lot of times people will say, well, I've got uh, $100,000 in this bank account. Should I not include this, right? It's, you're not needing to be broke to qualify for this program. In fact, you can actually combine up to 30% of your own funds to use in conjunction with the Dream for All program. So you can do the 20% and the, you know, up to 30%, making a 50% down payment, which would be amazing. As far as how to pay back this money, um, if you only borrowed, you know, we say you can take up to 20%. If you borrowed only 10% of the sales price, then you would only uh, pay back 10% of your appreciation, as well as depend, it would depend on your income uh, limits and which bucket you're in, low or medium. So if you're in the regular or moderate income, then you would pay back 20%. Um, it's one for one. You borrow 20, you pay back 20. But if you're in the low income, you it's a little bit sweeter of a deal in that you borrow 20, you would only pay back 15. So it's great because you get to keep a, a more of your um, equity. And the shared appreciation terms, there is a cap on the amount of money so uh, that you would ever have to pay back. Um, which is two and a half times what you borrowed. So if you got dream money for two a hundred thousand, it would be two and a half times a hundred thousand, which would be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Um, when you do the shared appreciation class, it does give an example of how much 
um, your house would have to appreciate starting at 500,000 when you purchased it. If it appreciated all the way to 1.3 is what it would have to in order for you to reach that cap. So it's definitely, um, it's, it's a really great program. <clears throat> and then again, here's the links for the income limits, the chart that you see here, because it is per county. And then if you wanted to see if you fall under the 80%, this is where you would look as well. And this, just keep in mind that a borrower's income, let's say um, they uh, are really close to the 80% um, MI income, which might be $120,000 in Contra Costa County. If the borrower receives um, or qualifies for the loan using their base income, excluding their commissions or overtime or things like that, um, that would put them over that limit, we, and CalHAFA allows this, would be able to use just that income. And then on the same token, if the borrower's income exceeds the county limit, say the county limit was 300,000, but because of a $50,000 bonus that puts them over, we do not have to um, include that income and uh, they would still be eligible. So moving on, there's two examples I wanted to share with you very quickly, the uh, moderate income Molly. Um, this is an example of the moderate income borrower purchasing a home at 500,000, they would get two loans, the 400,000 for the first mortgage and the 100,000, which would be equal to 20% of the home's price, right? So 100,000, it would be a 0% interest, zero monthly payments for that loan. Uh, five years later, this Molly decides to sell and it's appreciated 140,000. She would have to pay back $28,000, which is 20%, and she would get to keep 112, which is 80%. So this bigger house right here really brings home the key because it also takes into account that you started off at 500,000 or um, five, 400,000 for your first mortgage, but now you've paid it down over the years and once you pay back the dream, the CalHAFA monies, and uh, you would be left with $142,000. So this is really amazing because this is someone that, I mean, it really could change people's lives. They've purchased a home with minimal money. Now they've been able to use their home as an investment, take this money and buy another property. Dream the the second example is low income Larry eighty percent um same exact example except that the payback um on the dream uh, or on the appreciation is only fifteen percent so here he's walk getting to keep uh, only having to pay back twenty one thousand and uh, he gets to walk away with one hundred and forty nine thousand dollars in this example um as opposed to only one hundred and forty two if you are in the uh, moderate income. So daily rates, uh, when it first opened up on March 27th was at six and a quarter and today is six and an eighth. And uh, then, um, oh, and I'm sorry, you can always go to the website, check these interest rates. They're going to post the standard and they're going to post the low income. And then a couple things that you need to know. Uh, all we need is a contract in or a ratified contract in, in order to lock and reserve the money. Um, this is very different from many banks that require a full underwriting approval. So as soon as you have the contract, let us know. We can lock it um, within as long as it's before 1.30 that business day. Um, the home, home buyer education has three components. Um, the $99 e-home course. The second thing is they need to uh, schedule that counseling call. And the third thing is the supplemental shared appreciation course, which are all requirements. I wanted to mention EMDs. Those are not for the loan, right? They're, um, it is to get into contract. It is to look uh, um, attractive to the listing agent and to the seller. But if a borrower, um, you should know that a borrower can be refunded their deposit, uh, their EMD money. So at closing, we can use the dream money to uh, uh, overfund and uh, the deposit so that they can get their deposit back. Um, the loan itself is like any other conventional loan. Uh, we can close these. We have closed uh, CalHAFA loans inside 21 days. Um, as you know, there's been so much excitement about this. So uh, things are out of our control, our turn times with CalHAFA, scheduling um, counseling. Um, once we have a final approval with our underwriters, then we all we do is we send it over for Cal to CalHAFA for a final commitment, and they do a final quick review. Um, extensions are available. Um, I would definitely uh, 
you know, be cautious if you're looking at new construction um, because because of the fact that funds are limited. Um, and then finally, um, I wanted to try to keep this under 15 minutes, which I'm so happy. Um, here's all of my contact information. Please reach out to me with any questions. Uh, you can direct your borrowers to shop your mortgage, or I can email them a direct link with information and how to get started. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to working with you.